Welcome to lecture number 7 on matrix methods of structural analysis. Today, in lecture number 7, we will discuss the analysis of portal frames by matrix flexibility method. Now, we will take one example on portal. The analysis is uh, more uh, similar to that of continuous games. There is no, not much difference. Therefore, we will just take an example of a portal frame, uh, a single bay, single story portal frame of 4 meters height, 3, me 3 meters bay width or 3 meters span and uh, it is subjected to a UDL of 60 kilo per meter run. The moment of inertia of the columns 3 times i, the beams it is 2i, so this is 3i. So, it is a symmetrical frame, with reference symmetry by symmetry we mean with reference to the vertical axis the part on the right is just a mirror reflection on the part on the left here it is fixed, here it is fixed here it is UDL, here it is UDL this is uh, 4 meter side, this is 4 meter side this is of 3i, this is also of 2i so the frame with reference to the vertical axis it is symmetrical therefore it is a frame symmetrical in geometry and also symmetrically loaded. Now, that is about the structure. Now, coming to matrix flexibility method. So, the first work is we have to find out the degree of static interdependency. Before discussing static interdependency, we need some fundamentals regarding the types of support. We know uh, in the case of two dimensional structures, we have hinged support, roller support and a fixed support. So we will discuss about how many reaction components are possible and what about the degrees of freedom of different joints. Now a hinged structure is position fixed. It can take a vertical reaction, it can take a horizontal reaction but it cannot take any moment because any non-zero moment will make it rotate. Therefore, Two reaction, there will be two reaction components, one is vertical, the other one is horizontal. These are the two reaction components available. Coming to degrees of freedom, it is one. It, that is, it is free to rotate. Any non-zero moment will make it rotate. So that is the degree of freedom or we can call it as release. It is free to rotate. Free to rotate. Coming to the next type of support, roller support. A roller support can have only a reaction component perpendicular to the plane of rollers. Now, it cannot take any horizontal reaction because it is placed on rollers, it will start moving. It cannot take any horizontal reaction component. Similarly, it, it will rotate. Any non-zero moment will make it rotate. So therefore, the only possible reaction component is the reaction perpendicular to the plane of rollers. So perpendicular to the plane of rollers, you have got only one reaction component possible. The degree of freedom is 2. Degree of freedom or release is 2 because it is free to move in the horizontal direction because it is placed on rollers. It is also free to rotate. So that is the degree of freedom or the release is 2. Next type of support is a fixed support. A fixed support can have a vertical reaction component, can have a horizontal reaction component and also it will take a moment. Fixed. It is fixed. So it will not rotate, it will take moment. Therefore, the reaction components possible are 3 here. Now it is zero because it cannot move in the vertical direction, it cannot move in the horizontal direction. Since it is fixed, it also cannot rotate. No degree of freedom. Because this idea will be useful in finding out the degree of independence. So this, this is about the types of types of support, reaction components, and the degrees of freedom. Now, now we will take up the first step. So in the analysis of a structure by matrix flexibility method, first one is that of finding out the degree of interdependency. The degree of interdependency in the case of portal frames is uh, given by the number of closed loops into 3 minus number of releases. 
Now here, number of closed tube in this case is 1. This is 1. Suppose you take a bottle frame of this. It is of closed loop 102. Suppose you take a frame like this. Like this. This you can call it as 3. Number of closed loop is 3. Number of closed loop is 3. So in this case, the number of closed loop is 1. Therefore, it is 1 into a 3 minus number of releases. We know this is the release or degrees of freedom. Now for a fixed support, the number of releases is 0. Left hand side is fixed, right hand side is also fixed. Therefore, no release here, no release here. Therefore, the number of release is 0. Therefore, this is 3. Therefore, the degree of static independency of the given structure is 3. Next step is, after finding out the degree of static independency, we have to find out the primary structure or we have to find out the released structure. Actually, when the degree of independency is 3, we have to treat any 3 quantities as redundants. Here also there are number of methods. So, we will, what we will do is, we will release the support at D and we will make it as a cantilever. So this is the structure. Now we just remove the right hand side support. Support D is removed. So the primary structure what we do is release support D. This is only one method. There are more, more than uh, one approach. So we are just releasing the support at D. So at support D we have a vertical reaction component, we have a horizontal reaction component and also there is a moment component because you know at a fixed support there are three reaction components possible. Therefore, so vertical reaction at D, horizontal reaction at D and moment at D. These are Therefore, release support D. So, this is the primary structure. By releasing support D, we are removing three redundants and making the structure statically. This is the primary structure. Now, next one is after this, we will just. We'll find out the fixed end moments. Fixed end moments. M of A B equal to M of B A equal to M of CD equal to M of M of DC equal to 0 because the columns AB is not laterally loaded, CD is also not laterally loaded, there is no lateral loading, therefore M of AB is 0, M of BA equal to 0, M of CD equal to 0, M of DC is also equal to 0, only span BC is loaded, therefore M of BC equal to is equal to minus w l square by 12 equal to w is 60 minus 60 into span is 3 v square by 12 and m of cb equal to plus w l square by 12 equal to plus 60 into 3 square by 12 so 3 square will be 9, this is 12, so it's 3 by 4, so 4, this is 15 into 3 minus 45, minus 45, this is plus 45 kilometer meter. That's about the fixed end moments. Therefore, in the structure, now we have
So fixed end moment here is 45. Fixed end moment here is also 45 clockwise. This is anti-clockwise, this is clockwise. 45 kilometer. This is the figure showing the fixed end moments. Fixed moments. Now, after finding out the fixed end moments, we have to get the system forces. System forces. The system forces are the system forces. So here yeah, this is Now here it is fixed. Here it is fixed. Right. Now this is minus 45. Here it is zero. Therefore, the fixed end moment here, the system force will be here. F1 star. F1 star equal to 45. So the, the, the two moments here will give f force r equal to 45. Now so here, uh, this is free end now. Therefore, this is clockwise 45. To make it zero, you apply anti-clockwise. Well, anti-clockwise, this is f2 star, f2 star equal to 45. Then, these are the forces resulting from the given external forces. Now, we want to find out the redundant forces. Redundant forces are, let us call this VD as F3 naught, this HD as F4 naught, and MD as F5 naught. F5 naught. These are the, these are the system forces F1 star, F2 star. These are the redundant forces F3 naught, F4 naught, and F5 naught. That's about the So these two, these two can't shoot system coordinates. So this is uh, system forces, right? Now, after finding out the forces resulting from the external forces and also the redundants, the next step is the formation of B matrix. B matrix is the transformation matrix. Now, for getting the B matrix, what we do is we have to apply a four star equal to unity. A four star equal to unity. Now, here in the first one, we just apply. Just apply a four star equal to unity. A four star equal to unity. Now, before this thing, we have to form the element coordinates. Element coordinates are, we have three members, three members. This is one, two, all in the clockwise direction. Three, four, five, and six. These are the element element coordinates. These are the six element coordinates. Now what we have to do is we have to apply a full star equal to unity, find out the forces along the element coordinates 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, then apply F2 star equal to unity, find out the forces as we have done earlier we have to do it. Right. Now when we apply F1 star equal to unity here Unity here. This is fixed here. Therefore, the anti-clockwise moment here will also be equal to one. And here it is zero, zero, zero because we made this end as a free end. Therefore, the B matrix will be B matrix will be minus one. That is along coordinate one minus one. Plus one zero 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 zero. So minus one one zero 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 zero. That is applying f one star equal to unity. Now applying 
F2 star equal to unity. This is the structure. These are the three elements. We have to apply now F2 star. F2 star equal to unity. Therefore, this will give for this element to be equilibrium, to be in equilibrium. So this should be one. It's anti-clockwise, therefore this is clockwise. But this joint equilibrium, when this is clockwise, this is anti-clockwise one, and therefore this is clockwise one. Therefore, the second column of the B matrix will be starting from one, plus one, minus one, plus one, minus one, zero, zero, plus one, minus one, plus one, minus one, zero, zero. That is F two star equal to unity. Then. Now, so we have applied the system forces. Now, coming to redundant forces, F3 naught. Let us take F3 naught. Applying F3 naught equal to unity. These are the elements. We are going to apply F3 naught equal to unity. So, coming to the individual elements, when this is F3 naught. For this element, this also equal to F3 naught. It is axially loaded, no problem. That will not cause any moment. Now coming to this joint equilibrium. When this is one downwards, this should be one upwards. This should be one upwards. For this element, when this is one upwards, this should be one downwards. So the distance here is three meters. So these two forces will cause an anti-clockwise moment of 1 into 3 therefore for equilibrium there will be a clockwise moment of 3 kilometer so that is for the member equilibrium now coming to this joint coming to the joint when this is 1 downwards this will be 1 upwards when this is clockwise 3 this will be anti-clockwise 3 right now coming to this member equilibrium when this is 1 upwards this is 1 downwards when this is anti clockwise, this will be clockwise. clockwise. That's about uh, the values. Now, along this coordinate 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., this is plus 3, minus 3, plus 3, 0, 0, 0 moments. There is no moment at uh, this support and uh, this support. Therefore, it is plus 3, minus 3 plus 3 then 0 0 0 0 0 that is the third column of the B matrix so that is F3 naught so up to this we have applied F1 star F2 star this is our B star matrix what we are deriving is B naught matrix applying F3 naught equal to unity we have that one column then, for getting next column, let us apply F4 not equal to unity. This one, F4 not equal to unity. So, these are the three elements. F4 not. Right. Now, we are applying F4 not equal to unity. Now, coming to element equilibrium, when this is 1 towards left, this will be 1 towards right to satisfy sigma h equal to 0 right but these two forces acting over a height of 4 meters will cause a clockwise moment of 4 therefore for equilibrium there will be an anti clockwise moment of 4 so that completes equilibrium of this element now coming to this joint equilibrium when this is 1 towards right this will be 1 towards left when this is anti clockwise 4, this is clockwise 4. That is for the joint equilibrium. Now, coming to member equilibrium, for this member, when this is 1 towards left, this is 1 towards right. When this is clockwise 4, this will be anti clockwise 4. So, that, that is for member equilibrium. Now, coming to this member, for this joint equilibrium, when this is 1 towards right, this will be 1 towards left. When this is anti clockwise 
4, this will be a clockwise. This is for the joint equilibrium. Now coming to this. So this is 1 towards left, therefore this is 1 towards right. Now here, these are axial forces that will not cause any moment. But here, this reaction is a lateral force. Therefore, the moment here will be, when you take moment about this point, it is plus 4 minus 1 into 4. This is also 4 meters. So, here the moment will be plus 4 minus 1 into 4. Therefore, the moment here will become 0. That is about the moments. Now, in the same order, so here, 0 plus 4 minus 4, 0, 0 plus 4 minus 4, plus 4, then plus 4, then minus 4, and then 0. That's about the fourth column, fourth column of the B matrix. You have got one more redundant. You have got, you have got uh, MD. F I naught. So these are the three elements. We have assumed this to be clockwise. It can be assumed in the anti-clockwise direction also because this can be assumed towards right also. Nothing wrong, right? So this is F I naught. Let us assume F I naught equal to unity. So this being a moment, when this is clockwise, this will be anti-clockwise. One. Therefore, for the joint equilibrium, this will be uh, clockwise 1. Therefore, for the member equilibrium, anti clockwise 1. For this joint equilibrium, when this is anti clockwise 1, this is clockwise 1. And for this member, this is anti clockwise 1. That's about uh, Fi not equal to unity. So, coming from 1, this is minus 1 anti clockwise because all coordinates will assume the clockwise direction. Therefore, minus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 at 3 4 plus 1 5 minus 1 and then here this plus 1 plus 1 this is the B matrix B not matrix and the B star matrix a very important matrix so it is about the derivation of the B matrix Next is element flexibility matrix. Next step is derivation of element matrix alpha. For element one, alpha one will be for element number one. Alpha 1 will be L equal to 4 meters, L equal to L by L1 by 6 E1, E1, 2 minus 1, minus 1, 2. So that is equal to L1 equal to 4 meters by 6 E, I1 equal to 3 I, I1 equal to 3 I, 3 I. Therefore, into 2 minus 1 minus 1 2 equal to so cancel 2 3 so this is 2 by 9 3 into 3 9 this 2 will take it inside therefore it is 1 by 9 ei for convenience, we will have to simplify because we have to take some common terms out. Therefore, these two we are taking inside. Uh, 1 by 9a will just keep it outside. So, 1 by 9a, this is 4, this is minus 2, minus 2, 4 minus multiplied by 3. So, that is equal to alpha. What that is equal to alpha. Coming to alpha 2. Alpha 2 equal to L2 by 6 E2 I2 into 2 minus 1 minus 1 2 
that is equal to L2 equal to 3 meters. L2 equal to the horizontal moment is of length 3 meters. Therefore, L2 equal to 3 meters by 6e. The moment of inertia of the horizontal moment is 2i, 2i, therefore into 2i into 2 minus 1 minus 1. Here also let us try to have 1 by EI outside, therefore what we can do is say so this this will become 2, 2 and for convenience we will multiply by 9, divide by 9 so that we want to have 1 by 9 EI outside. Therefore, E is there. We will take this uh, fourth inside. Therefore, that is equal to uh, 1 by 9 E. We have taken E, I, and uh, this 9 outside. Remaining values are so 4, this is 9 into 2, 18 by 4. It is bracket. It is 18 by 4. Here it is 1 into 9 by 4 minus 9 by 4. So this is 9 by 4. This is 18 by 4. What we can write it is 1 by 9 ai into 18 by 4 equal to 4.5 4.5 minus 2.25 minus 2.25 to 5 and again minus 4 by 5 now coming to member 3 member 3 is same length member 1 so here also length is 4 meters uh, this is 3 and same thing therefore alpha 1 is also equal to alpha 3 Alpha 3 and alpha 1 are one and the same. One and the same. Now, assembled element flexibility matrix. Alpha equal to alpha equal to we know alpha one, alpha two, alpha three, all other values are zeros. Values are zeros. Therefore, therefore, in all the cases, one by nine a is outside. One by nine a is common here for three also and also for. Therefore, alpha equal to alpha equal to one by nine e i one by nine e i alpha one four minus two so it is four minus two minus two four zero 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 The same thing for 3 also, for, for 2 it is 1 by 9 EI, uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 4.5, minus 2 point, minus 2 point, 2, 5, 0, 0, minus 2 point, 2, 5, 4.5 0 0 then the fifth and for element number 3 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 now this value is 4 minus 2 minus 2 4 that is about the assembled element 
flexibility matrix as we have discussed in the case of continuous beams these two matrices are very important if these two are derived then other time other things will be calculation only calculation only right now this is alpha matrix assembled element flexibility matrix now next step is redundant forces f not equal to minus c a not not inverse into a not star into f star so actually i have taken a 3 by 3 3 3 degree indeterminate structure the calculations will be lengthy therefore what i want to say i am just going to give only the procedure so the derivation of these two are very important that we have done we have done both here are to only calculations as we have done in the continuous beams but still in the next lecture we will take a structure with the two degrees indeterminate so in which i will give all steps including the results so here i will stop only with the procedure so this these two are very important that i have completed i will tell you since already we have discussed continuous beams so understanding this procedure will not be difficult so you know a not not equal to a not not equal to uh, b transpose alpha is to b so a not therefore b not so this also b not now b not matrix consists of six rows and three columns it is a 6 by 3 matrix b not matrix is 6 by 3 therefore b not transpose will be a 3 by 6 i am not going to write the values this is 6 by 6 b not is 6 by 3 so when you multiply these two you will get a 3 by 6 and when these two are multiplied you will be getting a 3 by 3 matrix that i will stop here I will just leave this to the viewers to do this problem and uh, so the base is not uh, star, is not star, is not not. Now not only this, we have to form the three uh, by three matrix and then we have to invert it. If we want a not not inverse, so we know inversion of a three by three matrix itself is a problem. But however, nowadays uh, a three by three matrix can be solved in. using the mobile see no time therefore the procedure is not be hand difficult one so coming to a not star a not star equal to b not a transpose alpha into b star b star because a not star not star right now b not transpose is again 3 by 6 Six alpha six by six coming to B star six rows and two columns only so it is six by two again I repeat this B not transpose alpha is available in the previous step therefore that results can be used here we need not only once again multiply so you will be getting three by six matrix from the previous step so now we have to multiply. This three by six by six by two. When three by six matrix is multiplied by six by two, we will be getting a three by two matrix. We get here three by two matrix. That is a not uh, star. A not star. So now, now determinant force. Determinant force. f not equal to minus a not not inverse a not star into f star f star now we have a not not and also a not not inverse we will be getting a 3 by 3 this is equal to a 3 by 3 matrix and a not star is 3 by 2 matrix 3 by Two matrix and F star consists of two values F one star and F two star. We got F one star and F two star. So this is two by one. It is 
on f1 star and f2 star values are already available with us now when you multiply these two you will be getting a 3 by 2 matrix 3 by 2 when you multiply this and this you will be getting a 3 by 1 matrix 3 by 1 a column vector you will be getting 3 by 1 column vector so the 3 by 1 column vector will be this will be you have f3 naught f4 naught and f5 naught so after multiplying all these things you will be getting 3 values they will be f3 naught namely Vd, f4 naught namely hd, f5 naught namely md. These values will be, these are the redundants. So you have the values of the redundants. So that is how we will have to find out the values of the redundants. Now coming to the next step, we have done continuous leaps. It may not be a problem for the viewers. Now next is the of element forces. P P equal to P into F. Now this B matrix is totally six rows, five columns. So this is six rows and five columns. This matrix. B matrix is six rows, five columns, six by five matrix. B into this will be uh, F will be will be f not f star and f not now f star we have two values f1 star and f2 star f not we have three values namely f3 not f4 not f5 not so this will be a 5 by 1 5 by 5 rows f1 star f2 star f3 not f4 not f5 not so 5 values so when 6 by 5 is multiplied by 5 by 1, we will be getting a 6 by 1 force vector. We will be getting P equal to 6 by 1. Now there will be, there will be, if this is the frame, this is the frame, this is P1, P2, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6. So this P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6 will be getting. So that is the element forces. The forces along the element coordinates 1 to 6 will be getting. That's about the element forces. Now, after getting the element forces, now next step is final forces. Final forces. P F equal to P F equal to P minus P equivalent. P equivalent. So just now we have got uh, this values six by one. We have just now we have got it. P equivalent will be the values opposite to the fixed moment. So here this is the frame. The fixed moment here is minus 45, fixed moment is plus 45. Therefore, the equivalent joint force will be this will be 45, 45, and here opposite this is 45. Now, here it is 0, they are not uh, carrying any lateral loads. Therefore, the PE will be PE will be 0, 0, here it is plus 45 plus 45 here it is minus 45 0 0 minus 45 0 0 so this p values minus this p equivalent this one this one will give you the final forces so the final forces we have to draw the free body you know, for one two you have to mark whatever is the moment along with the sign you have to mark along one two three four five six and uh, for which you have to draw the support moment diagram on the support moment diagram we have to superimpose the simply supported moment diagram so that will give you the final bending moment diagram so we have taken a big problem because i wanted to start with a symmetrical frame therefore we have just done a problem but we have not completed the calculations 
so number one your continuous beams discussion will help you to do the calculations also we are going to do one more problem next class by taking some unsymmetrical frame uh, with two degrees of indivisible that will complete all the calculation we just complete so with this uh, the viewers are uh, advised to do the calculation complete it and uh, i hope there will be no problem so this lecture will complete with this so next lecture lecture number 8 uh, we will present a problem on a frame statically indeterminate to 2 degrees and geometrically as well as loading completely unsymmetrical we will discuss one more example in the next lecture thank you for listening thank you